Hello everyone, welcome to the table. Today we're taking a look at this knife right here. This is a new release uh, from Spyderco. This is the Spyderco uh, Gale Bradley 2. And this particular one has these Jade G10 scales. I do think this one is an exclusive to Blade HQ, so I did pick this up from them, you know, a couple weeks ago. And uh, so this model right here, we can see this is the Gale Bradley 2 Natural G10 in crew wear plain edge so the blade steel on this one like i just said we have that cpm crew wear um, and again so a nice super steel you know sprint run right here or at least a dealer exclusive so i i imagine it might be in some limited numbers but i'm happy to say or maybe not happy to say but i will say that the knife is still in stock you know a few weeks after it was released which is always a good thing because it gives you know latecomers a chance to pick one up but honestly i probably would have bought this knife regardless of the materials um, or scale pattern or color because uh, i just really like this design so ever since i've seen pictures of the gale bradley 2 it just feels like a really classic knife design so when you look at the blade we just have this gorgeous drop point here and i love those just nice grind lines on the steel there it's just a very very nice handsome looking knife and um, when it comes to size you know it definitely you know, is a full size everyday carry knife. We can check out uh, the blade length right here. So, you know, essentially we are right at three and a half inches of cutting edge with an overall length of about eight and a half inches, maybe a hair over that, um, which is just, you know, right in that category of a full size everyday carry knife, not too small, not too large. You know, this is kind of the Goldilocks size for a lot of us out there. Um, and of course, what makes this one kind of unique, besides the blade steel, we have these uh, natural jade G10 scales. And so it just it just looks nice. It looks nice. It has kind of that semi-transparent look to it. Like you can see the holes right through the uh, G10 there, which of course, some people just love the natural G10 as is. But natural G10 also serves kind of as a good base if you're going to dye the scales eventually. You know, give yourself kind of a unique color. So I might do that as well. Um, but this knife is just so finely, nicely tuned from the factory that uh, in my opinion, it'd almost be a shame to take it apart and, you know, screw up what they did there. Because this particular knife um, comes from their um, Taichung Taiwan factory. So we can see the blade marking for that right there. And um, their factory in Taiwan for Spyderco, they produce some really top-notch stuff. You know, almost everything that comes out of there comes out just about right. You know, very good quality. I mean, the action on this knife out of the box, I mean, for a knife that runs on those phosphor bronze washers in there, I mean, the action is just incredible. Um, you know, the, it almost just drops shut on you. Very nice. And so who needs bearings when you got something that's tuned so nicely? And so I do like that aspect of the knife as well. Um, so, of course, satin blade. Um, we have a pocket clip right here, standard po Spyderco pocket clip. In fact, the only thing I've done to this knife, um, it did come tip down. I switched it to tip up carry. And I'll probably upgrade this to like a deep carry clip from like Lynch Northwest or some other custom clip in the future. Um, but for right now, we still have the stock clip on here. Hardware is all satin as well. Liners are satin. And of course, looking in the liners, we can see there's some lightning done in there. They did some drill out some holes, which like I mentioned, you can see those through the G10. Hopefully that comes out on camera. Um, but again, and that's just to lighten the weight a little bit. So this knife, um, I want to say it was a little over four ounces. So let's see what we got here. So four point, yeah, 4.4 4 ounces, basically. So um, that's the weight we're coming in at for this full size pocket knife right here. Excellent action. And of course, it's a liner lock. So you can see the lock up right there. I really appreciate the thickness of the liner lock right here. Feels very secure. Nice early lock up as well. So no issues with that. Just really, really nice. Even the centering for something on washers. I mean, check that out. <laughs> that is perfect. <laughs> I love that. So perfect centering, great lock up. Absolutely, of course, no play, and I wouldn't expect any. Um, and right here on the blade as well, I didn't mention, but we can just see little Texas logo on there. Let's see if that comes out. There we go. So, Gail Bradley, Weatherford, Texas. So, we just have the maker's logo on there, which again, very classy, nothing wrong with that. We have just the tiniest little swedge up here at the top of the blade on both sides, so it looks really good. 
looks really good. Um, so again, no, this is an exclusive, I think, to Blade HQ, still in stock as of this point. So that's kind of one of those nice things in case you still want one or you see this now and, oh man, I want to go pick one up, um, especially here around the holiday times. Uh, but we can also do a few quick uh, size comparisons, I guess. So we can also compare it to, this is the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And it's pretty similar, honestly. Um, we have a U.S. made Spider Co. versus a tai Taiwan made Spider Co. Both excellent quality, so no issues there. Just kind of a different style of knife. We have liner lock versus compression lock. I actually do like the compression lock, but man, there's nothing like a nice thick liner lock, right? Like this one has. It just feels very secure and a very common, you know, lock style right there. But beyond that, uh, very similar, you know, in size overall. Um, overall size, I should say. Um, we also have a Benchmade bug out right here. So a little bit smaller and uh, definitely more lightweight because of the plastic scales. But just as size comparisons, we have these on the table. Uh, let me also throw out one more. So let me move this one up here, move these guys down. We also have the Microtech. This is the MSI. So we can just see kind of this big chonker knife right next to it. <laughs> and it's actually, it's not too big in comparison to the Gale Bradley. Um, but definitely, you know, one of those big hand filling knives, if those are your thing, if those are your style. Uh, but just some size comparisons on the table for you, uh, if in case you're kind of wondering, like, where does this knife size up? How does it fit in um, with some of its uh, contemporaries out there? So the question is, you know, checking out all these other knives, checking out these scales, checking out the color. Like, do you like this JG10 color? And if not, what are you going to do with it? So that's kind of one of the things I'm debating right now, because I do have some Rit dye. So I have a couple of different colors, actually. I have this purple right here I've used before. Um, same thing with this tropical teal. Um, so I'm kind of tempted, you know, maybe one of these colors I might, you know, color the scales on this one. And so I've done the purple before and, you know, I haven't left it in super long. So it still kind of holds that translucency to it. But it, of course, it's a purple color. And I know, you know, other spider codes like this one right here have kind of this blurple color. So I don't think it'll get as dark as this one using the Rit dye, um, unless I leave it in there really long. But, you know, it's, you know, it's consideration. Um, but also with the tropical teal, um, last knife I used this on, it didn't come out teal at all. It actually became a really nice, dark, uh, forest green color. And so I'm kind of curious to see how that would look on the knife as well, like a nice dark green. I think I might've left that knife in too long. So it lost the teal and just got kind of a greenish color. And I know everyone says the synthetic Rit dye is uh, better for G10 materials. Um, this is just an all-purpose dye. But honestly, they both worked about as well as each other. So um, I have no complaints there. Um, these are just two colors I have on hand. So I'm kind of considering those as my options for colors. Um, or I might just leave it. Ooh, I'm kind of kind of kind of tempted to do it both ways, honestly. Um, I don't want to take apart the knife and screw up the action um, or mess up any of the, the screws in case they're locked tight and on there. Um, but I am really curious to see what this knife would look like with some really exotic colored scales on it. So tell me what you think in the comments below. Um, tell me what you think of the knife itself. Beautiful knife, beautiful design. Just wanted to share it with all of you out there. Uh, hope you all have a knife day and I will see you in the next one.